So you remember buying a compass a short while ago from uh, Martins. They had some ultimate survival technology stuff marked down. Well, <coughs> the compass part is already starting to fail. See that bubble? If that bubble gets any bigger, it's going to interfere with the movement of the needle. And uh, here's a, you know, a slightly more expensive compass. Again, UST though, and uh, stored under the same conditions, and there's no bubble at all in it. So uh, I assume these in the car got a little too hot, but uh, uh, compasses can be usually filled with oil or or kerosene or something like that, some liquid that can't freeze, but. Uh, they have to be really tight or you can get the introduction of bubbles. I assume this happened from it getting too hot and either fluid licking up, uh, getting out or just a crack developing somehow, but uh, it's too bad. And you know, I had, a, I had a compass in the house stored for years. I must admit it was stored for years. A nice Brunton campus, compass. And uh, you know, I brought it out. This was a year or two ago. I brought it out to do some stuff with it, and it had, it had a huge bubble in it. But you'll notice even some expensive compass. This is an inexpensive compass, but some expensive compass like this Brunton that I got uh, have a very short guarantee period on them. And uh, you know, it it is a part that can fail the liquid fill part. Now uh, the disadvantage to non-liquid filled compasses I guess is that they tend to uh, the needle if you move the compass around the needle moves around a lot before it comes steady the idea of a liquid filled compass is it dampens the movement so in other words if I take this out and spin it around it's not going to take very long for it to return back to its correct orientation and uh, it can probably do that dampening other ways by uh, putting non-ferrous metals in the in the compass somehow, and I think I've seen that. But uh, there we go. No good anymore, and this one's still okay. Bye.